Thank you, Acting Speaker, and I rise to proudly to speak on the Work Safe, Workplace Safety Legislation Amendment, Workplace Manslaughter and Other Matters, Bill 2019. Um, and I'll start by thanking the Attorney General, uh, obviously for her work in this area. This was a commitment that we promised the people of Victoria we would deliver and she is delivering today. Can I also point out, I'm um, very happy to see the member for Sindham, our PALSEC, for workplace safety in the House this morning um, to see this bill pass. And I know you've done a lot of work on this as well, and I thank you for that. Um, and we should, I should thank the Premier and the whole Cabinet, really, because, again, as an election commitment, this is something that I proudly told everyone during the campaign that this is something we would do. And wage theft is another one that I know is going to come not too distant future. And I think when uh, the member for Ringwood mentioned some of the debate yesterday from the other side um, in reference to, I, I believe it was, uh, the community doesn't support this. Well, I can tell the House that the community that I spoke to in the election period and since do support this and do support this with very good reason because this bill is necessary. Um, I would like to thank the unions, the workers, the uh, health service personnel, everyone who is, who's ever come into contact with this terrible uh, plight on our society of losing people for no good reason. Um, now, when I started to think about this bill, uh, I, uh, I to think about how it would affect families. Obviously, I thought of my own family. Um, and uh, whilst uh, I, there has not been a workplace death in my family, as a young as a young boy, we lost uh, my uncle when I was uh, when I was about eight and uh, he died of a, of a heart attack. It was completely sudden. And he left three young children and uh, my auntie. Uh, they were obviously devastated. His mother outlived her child, which I can't imagine as a father. Um, my mother, his sister, misses him to this day. Our whole extended family was rocked. Now, in that case, it was just a tragic heart attack that happened and there's nothing you can do. Now, I think if you add to that a workplace accident, that may be nobody's fault. There is nothing you do. But I think that's worse. If you then add to that that, that board members should have had a duty of care for an employee and did not do it, did not look after them, even when they knew or had a reasonable expectation that they should have known and they did nothing and that same 38-year-old man dies because of that, well, that's atrocious. There was words on the other side about this being unfair. That is unfair. The idea that families and extended families lose the life of their loved one, they lose history that hasn't happened yet, that's unfair. So we're making the consequences of this clear. If you're responsible for the death of your worker, you will go to jail. Now, I want to come just quickly on to the definition of criminal negligence because there is, I think it's important to understand that there is no actual change to the obligations of the boardroom from this. They are, they are meant to look after their workers now. The penalties are not the same. The new offence does not alter the existing obligations or duties for employers. Okay, so what, so what, are, they expected, what are they expected to uh, not do? Well, they're expected not to be criminally negligent. And the criminal neg negligence test requires both a great falling short of a reasonable standard of care 
and a higher risk of death, serious injury or serious illness. So this bill basically says if you are that shoddy that you don't care, that you have not looked after your employees and they die as a result of your negligence, incompetence, whatever words, but the test is there, then you have a serious problem and you should have a serious problem. Um, I, I've been a business owner myself, as I said before in this house, and I would argue that if you are considering costs versus, versus the safety of your employers, employees, sorry, um, you are not running your business to a level where you're being profitable anyway. If you're cutting corners, you should be out of business. You have to look after your employees. And that has to come first, because otherwise your business model is just stupid anyway. Um, I want to shout out to the Transport Working Union, who are a great union, and uh, I, I, uh, they were a client of mine for 20 years, and I looked after their IT, and I know they have been very active in regard to the preparation of this bill. And uh, I particularly want to acknowledge the secretary of the TDUPS, uh, Mr John Berger, as, and I want to thank him and all his members for their work for pushing for these laws. And to quote John, there are so many loopholes in the current arrangements and some bosses, through negligence, are killing workers and never seeing a day in court. These laws will help ensure the single most important thing to us as a union that each of our members arrive home safely to their families at the end of every shift. So I also did uh, work in my previous, uh, previous career uh, in regard to writing software for a racking company that checks racking. And I can say that most employers do everything they can to make their warehouses safe. But there are some, there was one example and I won't use names, it was an example, it was an overseas example in the US where there were, there were warnings of things that had to be fixed, they weren't fixed, and someone died. And even after a person had died, there was still discussion apparently in the boardroom of this overseas company that said, well, if we spend all that money to fix this, we won't get our bonus at the end of the year. I, I can't imagine how those people go home and look at their own kids and think that my kid's going to go work somewhere in a few years and I hope they're not as crappy as I am. It's, it's, it is unbelievable. So we promised that we would bring this law in and we are doing it. We promised to make workplace manslaughter an offence and it is happening. This proposed legislation delivers on our important election commitment, as I said, by creating this new criminal offence. So currently, 300 to 400,000 is about all you can expect to be fined for your business if you are criminally negligent. It's not enough. What we're heading towards is something significantly, significantly higher. Jail time, $16 million. This is adequate to send a message to the boardroom that you have to look after your people. Hang on. Hang on. You have to check your sites. You have to make sure that the void space has the appropriate safety equipment around it so that young people can come home to their families, older people can come home to their families, and so children can grow up knowing their parents. I commend the bill to the House.